those those effects were mirrored in a similar fashion among the faculty and staff, about the half of the faculty and staff there at the Guthrie School, which uh, not surprisingly generated quite a bit of hubbub, and then it also generated some pretty serious conversations on our part in that school community about what we were doing to our children through the school cafeteria. So first I'm going to ask you your full name. Okay. Uh, Nelson Coulter. I live in Girard, Texas. All right. And Nelson, tell us how you got into permaculture. Uh, we sort of got into permaculture, I uh, say we, my wife and I, uh, my lovely bride of 38 years, Mo, uh, got in, uh, in permaculture uh, thought uh, primarily as a result of our initial um, toe dabbling into changing the way we eat. She uh, asked me over coffee about three years ago if I'd be willing to consider a change in the way we eat. And I said, absolutely, what you got in mind. And then she said, we need to quit eating processed sugars. Uh, and then I realized I'd made a mistake by agreeing so quickly without knowing what the result was gonna be. But um, I agreed and uh, we began removing processed sugars from our diet and immediately saw upticks in our health markers, uh, both of us, uh, weight loss drops and changes in, in um, positive health markers uh, to the better. Um, that led to um, exploration of other possibilities. Uh, we already owned a ranch property here in Kent County of Texas, which is in the northwestern portion, right at the bottom of the Texas Panhandle, rolling plains of Texas. And um, the more we began to study about healthy eating uh, and the impact of nutrition on our, on our personal lives and personal bodies, uh, the more convinced we are, were that um, that needed to translate into um, action on our part in relation to the health and well-being of our children and our grandchildren. And uh, we're both lifelong educators and I, at the time I was a superintendent of schools uh, and I felt like it needed to begin translating into uh, the people that worked uh, with me in the, at school and also the children that we served. So that was the initial step. Um, after that, uh, we began um, educating ourselves mostly through online TED Talks, uh, blog spaces, and became acquainted with a physician in Lubbock by the name of Dr. Ben Edwards, who is a functional integrated, uh, integrate, he, he practices what he calls functional integrative medicine. And Ben uh, ag agreed uh, to come talk to my faculty and staff at Guthrie about uh, general health and well-being uh, and, uh, and that would be about two years ago. That generated a lot of discussion among the professionals and, and working folks in our, in our community there in Guthrie at the time and um, so it accelerated our education um, because uh, some, a couple of the things that Ben promotes um, and we began to believe in uh, pretty um, um, stridently is the fact that um, food is our medicine and that uh, you cannot exercise your way out of a bad diet and that um, what you put into your body um, is going to result in some sort of consequence one way or the other and so we, that generated a lot of conversations uh, Mo intensified her online research with regard to health and well-being Ben recommended to us the book called Wheat Belly when he visited with our faculty and staff and uh, Mo read it first and then so um, not long after she read it she said I think we need to make another change in the way we eat personally and so we, we removed uh, most of the uh, um, processed grains uh, that are t in the typical American diet. Uh, Dr. Edwards calls it the standard American diet, SAD for short. And uh, so we removed uh, the processed grains, and not all processed grains, but um, I, I refer to them as the corporate uh, processed grains, and mostly, mostly the, the genetically modified grains. Again, uh, that generated another 
a cycle of uptick in health for my wife and I. Um, I was able, just within a few months, to completely come off of blood pressure medicine, which I've been on for years. I was able to uh, quit taking antacids, which I had taken for over a decade at the recommendation of this physician. Completely, um, just don't, I don't have heartburn or acid reflux anymore, ever. And um, it also, I wasn't uh, expecting this, but it eliminated the need for um, painkillers of any kind. I've had, in the last two years, I've only had two aspirin. Um, those, those effects were mirrored in a similar fashion among the faculty and staff, about the half of the faculty and staff there at the Guthrie School, which uh, not surprisingly generated quite a bit of hubbub, and then it also generated some pretty serious conversations on our part in that school community about what we were doing to our children through the school cafeteria. Um, running parallel to that was the the thinking uh, in the minds of my wife and I about uh, the moral obligation that we had if, if we could see that kind of significant health improvement in ourselves then certainly it had some bearing on our children and grandchildren so um, uh, we were already raising pretty what we thought was pretty healthy beef uh, and providing that to our families but we made the conscious decision to go completely grass-fed grass-finished with no antibiotics or hormones in our beef uh, on our ranch, we began raising chickens, um, both for um, meat and for eggs, and um, chose to go completely pasture-raised, pasture, pasture, raised, pasture fed, and uh, no organics, no antibiotics. I mean, um, no, uh, no antibiotics and no, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, hormones of any kind. So we began um, providing our, for our children and grandchildren that as well. Um, she moved us into the dairy market. Now, well, not commercial market, but she bought a dairy cow. I never, I never thought we would own a dairy cow, but we bought a dairy cow and began educating ourselves on that. And so uh, we're at the point now in our family that um, she and I are able to provide um, grass-fed, grass-finished meat, beef, and chicken uh, to our children and grandchildren, eggs, clean eggs, organic pasture fed eggs to our children and grandchildren and dairy products um, no hormones no antibiotics um, to our children and grandchildren and we are now interested uh, those conversations led us in, into a, a stream of thought about uh, if if clean food is so important then where does it come from so we kept educating ourselves backward about where clean food comes from and um, so we began those moves away from genetically modified stuff, anything that's not grown organically. Um, we began by voting with our pocketbook, uh, very making very deliberate cho choices about where we eat in restaurants, where we uh, mark sh shop in marketplaces. And again, the parallel conversation was going on at our school. And we came to the conclusion about a year ago uh, that we needed to divorce ourselves completely from the National School Lunch Program. So we did that at our little school, which meant turning back uh, about $30,000 in federal money. But uh, our, our school board agreed with us uh, when, we, when we put the evidence in front of them that we were not only um, not serving our children well by feeding them processed sugars, processed grains, multiple doses of grains, skim milks, all that commercialized stuff, but in fact, we were embedded in them habits, lifelong habits that were going to be detrimental to their happiness and well-being for a lifetime. So we divorced ourselves from the school lunch program and began only serving through our across our uh, cafeteria counter, um, grass-fed, grass-finished meats, organically grain, uh, raised produce, no processed sugars of any kind whatsoever, uh, very limited grain products, and when we did serve grain products, it would be something like, uh, of the heritage grains, spelt flowers, uh, camut, those quinoa, those kinds of things, but none of the genetically modified stuff. And um, real butter, real butter, no margarine, um, and um, only whole milk, only whole organic milk. We cut out uh, skim milk, 2% milk, strawberry milk, chocolate milk. Um, any kind of milk other than whole organic and also began seeing very positive upticks um, 
in the health and well-being of the students at the school and one of the things that uh, was a little bit surprising to us and we've even had visitors from regulatory agencies show up and visit and make note of the fact that when they stand in our cafeteria and watch our kids finish their lunch almost no food went in the trash can almost none and uh, another upside of that effect too was we let the kids eat all they wanted to as opposed to the national school lunch program um, we had to, under that program, we had to tightly limit portion sizes. It didn't matter if you were 6'6", 270 pounds, or 4'3", and 100 pounds soaking wet. You got the same amount of food. But our, our logic was, uh, regardless of if we were feeding you clean food, we didn't care how much you ate. And, and also, as you probably are aware, uh, nutrient-rich uh, nutrient food, nutrient-dense food, is satisfying. Our football coaches began to report to us that the football team during the afternoon practices had better, uh, longer, sustained, energetic practices, uh, less effects of that famished stuff going on with the players. And we just uh, began to see and hear a lot of evidence along those lines uh, about the impact on the health and well-being of the kids. So our journey uh, continues. Uh, my wife and I through those processes became associated with the, per the term of permaculture and then uh, the, perma the worldwide permaculture movement and because we are landowners and ranchers um, we began delving deeply into that and began to see the sensibility of it in, in the way that it uh, is a, a way of life and a way of thinking that is highly aligned to the way that uh, God created the planet and put the systems in place to provide abundance for us for our whole lives if we would only pay attention. What it has done for me, that the concept, the permaculture concept, has done for me more than anything else, I believe, is gave, given me a better grasp of the integrated and holistic nature of the way of thinking. That uh, we are, we are what we eat. And what we eat comes from some very specific places and practices and um, that um, we cannot be healthy unless the food we eat is healthy or the food that we eat that ate that food is healthy and that cannot be healthy unless the soil on which it was raised in is healthy.